A Scottsdale family that should be planning their teen's graduation party is instead planning his funeral. They are absolutely in shock after their son died over the weekend after taking a pill they said was laced with fentanyl. Now, 17-year-old Noah Elias' parents say he was sold the pill by a friend, and now they're sharing their painful story in hopes of raising awareness about the prevalence of fentanyl and the dangers just one single pill can pose. His family reflecting on Noah's life and impact. He was just a positive kid. Um, he loved people. He would often have me stop when he saw a homeless person on the corner and want me to give them money. His life impacted a lot of people. And the family says they also want justice for their son and the person who sold him the pills to face charges. So we're taking a deeper dive into the mind and motive of local cases just like this one that are making headlines. And here to discuss some of those recent stories that 12 News has been covering for you is psychologist Dr. Katie Coleman. So we want to get right to it. What do parents need to know when it comes to keeping our kids safe from these senseless deaths that come from fentanyl? You know, I think that when we think about a drug overdose, we're not thinking of the AP student, the football player, like this poor kid. Um, and so it really just goes to show you that this is such a widespread problem and that it does not discriminate who it can impact. And so what's really important for parents to know, keeping in mind, by the way, that fentanyl is the deadliest drug in Arizona now, passing methamphetamine. Which is outrageous. And the way that drug dealers are targeting these teens is Snapchat, social media, parents check your kids snapchat and social media and the thing is is that kids get information through social media they get through school parents do not shelter your kids let them know about these horror stories about what can happen so that they can really see the real life implications kids have this idea that they're invincible sure and it's okay and, and we really need to remind them that they're not and this is a real world example and even if the teenager's intention is to use the drug recreationally or not even necessarily the fentanyl in this case but whatever they might have thought it was so not, not to be afraid to continue prying into your child's life. Right, I mean, the way that these drug dealers are disguising pills now is they're pressing them to look like things like ecstasy, which, you know, don't have the same impact sure. on the body that fentanyl would. And so, yeah, do, regardless of the drug, just being aware that it can be laced with in literally anything. Doc, earlier we talked about this case, and just to recap, police say that a man in Prescott intentionally drove his car into the Yavapai Regional Medical Center. Uh, no one was hurt, but police say that Benjamin DeHaiti was having severe mental health concerns. Now, sometimes authorities will tell us they had a medical episode behind the wheel and it was an accident. Not the case here specifically. So what are the dangers getting behind the wheel if you do tend to have mental health issues. It's, it is, you're right, it's really interesting that they were very specific about the mental health concerns versus a medical episode. And so what I'm thinking is, okay, well, what could that be? Was this a person who was suicidal and decided to use this as a way to end their life? Were they driving and received a tragic phone call and thought this is it? Was it a, you know, a targeted situation? Were they psychotic and having command hallucinations? And so I think what's really important for everybody to know is that if you have a family member, if you have a friend that is in a mental health crisis and they start making maybe a veiled threat or they have a, a grudge against somebody or they make a comment that, you know, I just can't handle this anymore. Yeah or they're having voices that are telling them to do bad things, that those are the moments where you need to contact a mobile crisis, contact law enforcement, encourage the use of 988. Um, using those resources that are available, exactly. if there are any red, red flags that surface. So along with that, um, we know there were plenty of people inside the medical center at the time, and while there was only damage done, what problems could that cause for the people who might have accidentally been in the wrong place at the wrong time and been injured in such a situation? Well, I mean, number one, it's gonna cause them to pause, and you know, it could be a traumatic reaction for a lot of the people who were present. Um, and the other thing to consider um, is because this is a healthcare facility is that um, um, healthcare providers and healthcare facilities are among the most targeted when it comes to targeted violence too. And so it's a reminder for those working in these types of facilities that if that was the case, sure. that it's a possibility and we need to think about safety. Just be mindful, absolutely.